think that the Supreme Court has a duty to step in since this will impact, um, you know, the election? I know we want to act like he's just a normal guy, but he's a leading presidential candidate. The voters should know what's going to happen here. So what do you see playing out in the legal system? Well, there's a lot of developments yet to come, but I, I do think, I, I do believe the Supreme Court should step in. Obviously, this is totally unprecedented, and it's dangerous to our system. I mean, we've all discussed this before, and you all talk about it all the time. This is diminishing the American people's faith in our system of justice itself. And to maintain a republic, you have to have that. People have to believe that justice is fair, that there's equal justice under law. They don't see that right now. And I, I think that the justices on the court, I know many of them personally, I think they're deeply concerned about that as we are. So I think they'll set this straight, but it's going to take a while. You're right. The process takes a while to play out. You have Magna Mike Johnson, the Speaker of the House, implying that he's had communications with Supreme Court justices who have told them that a guilty verdict in a criminal case involving falsification of business records where a decision was rendered by 12 jurors, a fair and impartial jury, after a grand jury indictment, that he thinks the Supreme Court's going to step in. I, I want to bring in Dina Dahl. Dina, you and I have been co host of that as an attorney. How distressing, upsetting, problematic is everything you just heard? And what do you think about the Supreme Court's next steps? I mean, it's so disturbing. He's the number three most powerful person in our country, and we have three co-equal but separate branches of government. And so for him to imply that him and one of the, or a few of the nine Supreme Court justices are somehow in a coalition um, is very, very dangerous. It's dangerous even the perception of it is dangerous. It's the last thing that somebody like him should be communicating. And, and the fact is what we also know is about this appeal to heaven flag, right? That Justice Alito had on his beach house. But we've also seen photos of it outside the door of um, the Speaker Mike Johnson. So you think, well, perhaps he's talking about Justice Alito. They seem to have a similar philosophy in that way. It's very public image that we all know about so that kind of reinforces that perhaps he is personal friends with them and he has heard about them another kind of uh, dangerous thing about that is he said that he's as if he's he knows what they think about this like as if they also disagree with it i mean for one thing justices are never supposed to have a predetermined opinion on a case uh so perhaps we should be thankful that he said that because i think you're right if this ever tried to get to the Supreme Court. I don't see an avenue where the Supreme Court can somehow overturn him, but you know, creative people can do creative things and who knows, maybe there's some sort of appeal and there's enough justices willing to take something like that. But if a justice, you know, the first person I would depose in that respect would be Speaker Mark Johnson and say, what was that conversation you had with the justices? Why did you think um, that they were, you know, so offended by this? Um, and get them, honestly, to recuse themselves. But if they're, you know, if he's just making it up and he didn't have any conversation around, that is even as dangerous um, for him in such a, you know, when you have more power, I think you should have more responsibility to have that much power and then to imply that somehow this separate but co-equal branch of government is going to step in and the jurisdiction may have nothing to do with where the criminal defendant, Donald Trump, had all his constitutional rights afforded to him is, is very disturbing. 